Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So it occurred to me this week that I haven't really done anything with my Fanatec for a little while so what I thought I would do is see if my Fanatec has actually made me any faster around tracks, whether it actually has any effect on how fast I drive. Now my immediate instinct is that perhaps it doesn't make me much faster but it will potentially make me much more consistent. So I'm going to be letting you guys know how many takes I do of this run as well. So in this video I'm going to be going back to one of my very early videos talking about ring taxi drivers and I'm going to be attacking my 655.2 bridge to gantry on the Nordschleife in the Porsche GT2 MR to see how much faster I am a few months further down the line now I've had time to get myself used to this Fanatec DD2. And don't forget in the ring taxi video there was some traffic on the Nordschleife as well so I'm going to be adding exactly the same traffic this time around just to cause a little bit of chaos. But before we get going we are on the run up to Christmas now and of course I have set myself a target for Christmas and that target is 150 subscribers. As of the recording today, I am on 128 subscribers. So, of course, as per usual, if you like the content that I make, if you enjoy the videos, then hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe button as well, and most importantly, hit the little bell notification so that you guys know when I release a new video. So here we are heading out onto the Nordschleife and as you can see, I'm driving the GT2 RS MR, as I said in the intro, and last time I did a run in this car was in my ring taxi video, which I did a 655.2, which for me is a fairly stonking laptop. That's about as fast as I can go. But I also posed the question in the intro, does my Fanatec DD2 make me faster? And that's a very complicated question because there are two possible answers to that. Yes and no. And both, I think, apply in this situation. And you're now sitting there asking, this guy's talking rubbish. How can he possibly mean yes and no? So let me explain. I don't think over one lap as we uh, catch the car going sideways. That's a nice demonstration there of how the fidelity of the DD2, the force feedback helps me to catch slides. But I don't think the DD2 over one lap will gain me much lap time. I don't think it particularly makes me any faster than I would have been on my Logitech. However, I think it makes me more consistent, less likely to crash, and being able to catch slides much easier is one of the benefits of this DD2. It's kind of one of the reasons that you go direct drive is that you're feeling what the game is outputting. You're kind of feeling the force feedback as raw as possible from the game. There's no belts, there's no gears, there's no nothing, and it's very slidey this car. And what that means is that you're able to kind of predict what the car's going to do next with a higher degree of accuracy than you would do if, for example, for example, you were driving something that was gear driven because those tiny little adjustments as you feel the wheels kind of bobble around that might be the indicator of a slide potentially starting to happen just get lost and you just kind of you don't notice them. Um, now in terms of actually delivering force feedback this wheel whilst it is a monster and go and watch my 100% force feedback video because damn that was pr probably the most hardcore sim racing experience of my life um, I don't think it particularly does anything different apart from of course the fidelity of the, the feedback that you're getting which side shall I go which side shall I go this one just uh, making sure I don't die halfway around the lap um, apart from the fidelity of the force feedback you're getting it doesn't really do anything different however 
what it does do is make me much more consistent so I am able to put the car on the limit of grip much more of the time and what that means is that I can get closer to my fastest time a lot more of the time in uh, in stints now I could have done a video where I go out and do a stint and compare lap times and cross-reference how uh, how close it is to my optimum lap time and to be honest I think I'd have bored myself so what I mean is that I can kind of do the fastest lap times I possibly can and catch those little micro slides and little moments with a greater degree of accuracy than I would have done if for example I had a geared for a geared setup so a Logitech G920 or something of that ilk now one of the things I also want to talk about and this is something that I think has a much greater effect on my lap time than the actual wheel is my pedals now obviously I'm using Fanatec V3s which are load cell pedals and what that means is that instead of measuring how far your foot moves on the brake oh we got a CPU warning there I've got quite a lot of cars on track so maybe my computer is struggling a little bit um, so yeah instead of ha measuring how far your foot moves it measures how much pressure you're putting on the brake pedal and what that means is that it's much more realistic and similar to driving a real car and this is one of the points where I think it really does make a difference having a direct drive setup and the load cell pedals is that immersion factor and kind of feeling like you're in the car and of course we're not in the car let's kind of bring ourselves back to reality before we get too carried away there we go there's another slide there that I managed to catch now what that helps to do is get you dialed into a circuit much faster and I think actually this lap time is going to be <laughs> a little bit slower than my uh, ultimately fast lap time that I did last time around you can see I'm running out of fuel I've run a lap before this just as a bit of a bit of a warm-up but what it does mean is that when you're learning a circuit or kind of getting to grips with a car you do it much faster and obviously I have a decent amount of experience in cars I've driven for a while before I got into any kind of car sim simulator and what that means is that I can put that experience to greater use and I can apply that experience in my sim racing and the closer you can get to a real experience the more natural it's going to feel and the less you have to think about what you're doing and if you can think less about what you're doing you've got more chance to ooh, as we get very sideways through the last corner so this lap is a bit of a write-off now it's definitely not going to be faster than uh, what I did <laughs> in the ring taxi video there we go, so that was a 6.56.9, so that's close enough that I think it doesn't really make a difference how to how fast you're going, the actual wheel, but as I was saying, what it does do is help with the immersion and kind of activating some of that muscle memory from real life driving. It kind of, it definitely helps with catching slides and keeping the car on track now I think if I hadn't had that slide in the last corner I probably would have been on a par with my 655 time but there you go that hopefully that kind of helps you guys understand the benefits of a direct drive wheel it's not to make you faster um, but what it will do is make you more consistent it will definitely help you catch um, help you catch slides so that way you can put the car closer to the limit more of the time
and on that note let's uh, head towards the credits but before we do that then of course don't forget to do the fun YouTube stuff so like comment subscribe check out the Amazon links down below don't forget that if you guys buy stuff through those Amazon links Amazon give me a little bit of money just to help keep the channel running so for now thank you very much and we'll see you next time <laughs>